In this video, I'll be explaining uh, briefly some of the guidelines that uh, we will be using to enter SQLs for quizzes and assignments. Okay. Uh, now, I'm doing this because uh, we have lots and lots of questions for you to practice on. Uh, the whole idea is that you learn more by practicing. So I've given you lots of questions to practice on. Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to get into the burden of having to grade each and every one of them. You know, my whole semester will be spent just doing the grading. It's strictly not required. Uh, so what I've done is that uh, uh, for the SQLs, for the quizzes and assignments, uh, the SQLs will be graded automatically. Okay. Now, when it comes to automatic grading of SQLs, uh, you know, there are many different ways in which you can write correct SQLs for a particular question. Okay? So obviously when I'm doing automatic grading, I need to anticipate all the different possible ways in which one can write a correct SQL and that is just, uh, you know, there are just too many possibilities. So I can't account for all of those possibilities. Uh, so what I'm saying is, uh, let's follow some guidelines, which are actually good guidelines in any case. Let's follow some guidelines uh, so that I narrow the kinds of solutions that you can provide and then it becomes possible to automatically grade the SQLs. Okay, so that's what is going on here and that's what I'm explaining here. Okay, uh, but before I get into that, uh, let me just very quickly recap my assignment and review quiz policies. You know, there are lots, uh, almost every week you have an assignment and we've got lots of review questions uh, in every single video. Okay. Uh, so obviously, uh, when you have all of this, uh, you know, it might create some tension for students. Okay. Uh, I don't want to create any tension for you. The whole point of all of this is to ensure that you're able to learn the subject matter correctly. Okay. That's my sole goal. My only goal is that you learn the subject matter correctly without any tension. Okay. Now research has clearly shown, you know, I follow education research quite a lot. Uh, research has clearly shown that the, the single practice that facilitates deep learning of any subject is what they call as low stakes testing, okay? which means that students are subjected to tests and quizzes, but the stakes are very low. Okay? That is, you do the quiz and if you make a mistake, there's no big deal. It's not a hassle. Okay? So the point is that as you test yourself, by answering questions and seeing whether you get the answer right or wrong, you know, how difficult you find it, etc. You get a gauge of where your own understanding is and then you take necessary steps to become, uh, to become better and to correct uh, your mistakes and to, you know, uh, work over the flaws. Okay, that's the whole idea. So I view all the review questions and all the assignments as low stakes tests intended for students to learn. That's it. There's really nothing else, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm not trying to assess your, uh, you know, I'm not trying to grade you on these assignments and quizzes, okay? And my policy, if you've read it, it clearly says that all you have to do is just submit all the quizzes and all the assignments, okay? Reasonably on time. You know, I've given some deadlines, uh, due dates, Okay, and now those due dates are intended to make sure that you're keeping up with the course material, okay, that you don't fall behind, etc. Okay, so if, even if you submit four or five assignments late, I really don't mind, but it's not going to be good for you. Okay, but at the end of the semester, I want to see that you have submitted everything. Okay, so any mistakes that you make in your quizzes or assignments will have absolutely no effect on your final assignment grade. You know that assignments count for 10% of your final grade. As long as you submit all the assignments, every single question could be wrong, I don't care. But you will get the full 10% for that, okay? Obviously, I don't want you to submit wrong answers. I want you all to be able to submit the correct answers so that you learn, okay? So mistakes have no impact on your final assignment score. You only need to submit on time and also, I'm trying to make sure that every single review quiz and assignment has unlimited number of attempts. Okay, so you do it once, you get a few questions wrong, you go, you look back and you learn what to do, uh, and then you go back and if you like, you can make another attempt and get everything correct, right? So if you want to see a 100% score and that makes you happy, you can do it. You can just go back and do another attempt or keep doing attempts till you get everything right, okay? 
So really, uh, you can see that the stakes in these review questions and assignments, the stakes are very, very low. As long as you submit everything, you're going to get the full 10% at the end of the semester. Okay? So that's the whole point. Okay? So don't stress about these things, but at the same time, don't just sit back and relax because the instructor is being so uh, lenient, so light, uh, I'll just relax, I'll take it easy. Well, then the tests are going to kill you. Right? Uh, obviously, the tests are not like this. That is not low stakes. That's real stakes. Uh, so if you don't do these properly, you're going to get hammered in the test. Okay? So don't uh, you know, don't relax on this just because I'm being, uh, you know, I'm being uh, nice. Okay, so that's the idea. So now let's, uh, so again, as I said earlier, uh, I'm going to do automated grading of all of these, uh, these things. And that is why we are setting these guidelines so that automatic grading is possible. Automated grading is possible. Okay, hand grading is completely impractical for me. I've got more than 100 students in this particular class and uh, you know, every week almost there are 50 or 60 different questions. Uh, so it's, you know, 1500 or at least 1500 questions or even more than that every single week. Okay, I'm not going to be able to grade that. Okay, 1500, 2000, 3000 questions every week. I'm not going to be able to grade them. And then there's no point as well, right? What am I uh, gaining in the process? Okay, so we'll do automated grading. And so the, your answers will get graded. But of course, you know, with automated grading always comes the risk of, uh, you know, uh, the system making some mistakes. Okay, so sometimes your answer will be correct and the system will mark it as wrong because I didn't anticipate that particular answer. Okay, again, don't stress about it because it's obviously, as I've already told you, it's not going to affect your uh, final uh, assignment grade anyway. Okay, but if you say, well, I wrote something, the system told me it's wrong, it looks correct to me. And I really want to know whether what I did is right or wrong. Okay? That's a legitimate concern. In those cases, just reach out to me and say, Professor, this was the question. This is the answer I wrote. The system said it's wrong, but I think it's right. What do you think? Right? I may take a look at it and say, yeah, you're right. Don't worry about it. Okay? That's, that's the end of the story. Or if you're wrong, I'll come back and tell you, hey, this is not actually correct because X, Y, Z. It's wrong because of this reason. Okay? And it'll be done. Okay? So don't stress if your question is marked as incorrect, okay? If you're able to look at the actual correct answer, which will show up once you submit it, and then you're able to see, oh, that's where I made a mistake. Good, you learned something, okay? That's all is going on here, okay? Uh, so to minimize issues in automated grading, right? So uh, if you follow the guidelines that I'm giving you in terms of how to format, uh, how to really write your SQLs, okay? then the, uh, the number of possible solutions will obviously reduce and therefore most likely whatever answer you write will fall within my anticipated set of answers and I'll be able to grade it automatically. Okay, the system will be able to grade it based upon uh, what inputs I have put into the system. Okay, so I'm going to explain the guidelines here. They're actually pretty straightforward. I just thought I will explain it to you. Okay, of course if you fail to follow the guidelines uh, but otherwise, your, your answer may be completely correct, okay? Uh, it'll still be marked as incorrect. Don't fret over it, don't panic, okay? As long as you can see it's correct, just move on, okay? And if you really want to see a 100% score, go back to another attempt, get it 100%, right? No problem, okay? But I would uh, request you not to, uh, you know, ask me to go and, you know, manually grade it or override the grade or something. It's just a waste of time. I don't want to do that because anyway, you're going to get 100%, right? So it's more important that you know whether your answer was right or wrong, uh, rather than that a 100% score shows up on your, uh, you know, on your grade book. Okay? If you're really interested in that, just go back to another attempt and get your 100%. Okay, so here are the guidelines. Here I'm just listing all the guidelines. Okay, it's more really for your reference. I'm going to post this presentation. We'll go over each of them now. Okay? Uh, why is this coming here? Okay. So forget that one. So here we say in select and where clauses, mention the columns in the order they are mentioned in the question. Okay. So in the question, for example, as I've shown there, it says list the supplier number, name and status for suppliers in city London and with status greater than 14. Okay. Now remember, I've written S status because the actual column name in the table is S status. 
okay it's not status okay so here in the where in the select clause i have said supplier number name and status okay so i want you to write in your answer the, col the columns in exactly that order not in any other order if you write it in any other order your answer would actually still be technically correct okay but my system won't catch it because my system is looking for the column names in this particular order okay so we can write select s number s name s status which is the order in which the question mentions it from suppliers and then in the where clause also i want to say where city equals london and uh, uh oh where did i right okay in the where clause i say where city is london and state is greater than 14 okay that's the order in which the question says it here so in the where clause i have said it in exactly the same order okay so that's just a guideline now if you wrote uh, if you wrote s status greater than 14 and city equal to london technically it would still be correct it would do exactly the job that i'm requiring uh, but my automated system won't be able to catch it okay? because it's looking for things in this particular order okay really this is all i'm trying to say okay so if you wrote it in the opposite order okay supplier name uh, i change the order for example i say instead of supplier name and status i say status and name i reverse the order okay so technically this is correct but uh, you know the system is going to mark it wrong okay so that's really what is going on okay so i'm saying this is not actually correct incorrect it's correct it's just that it's not following the guidelines and it will be marked wrong okay so if you wrote this and it got marked incorrect okay uh, you can either just say, oh yeah, fine, I got it. My answer is correct anyway. I learned what is supposed to be learned and you can move on, okay? Or if you want to get it marked as correct, just go do another attempt and put it in the correct order, okay? So that's, that's really our first guideline. Uh, so again, uh, in this guide uh, that I'm just showing you, I've provided many examples of SQLs. Almost all the SQLs we are writing here are all technically correct okay they will almost all there is one which is not correct otherwise everything is correct they will all produce the correct results but uh, you know some of them don't follow the guidelines and they will be marked as incorrect you know so wherever you see incorrect mark like this it doesn't mean that it's technically incorrect it could be it might not be okay uh, what it's saying is you didn't follow the guideline and of course it could also be that uh, in this example, what we are seeing, whatever is marked as incorrect is actually technically correct, but guidelines-wise incorrect. But in the actual assignments and quizzes, uh, if it is marked as incorrect, it could be for one of two reasons. One reason is, well, it's actually incorrect. Okay, It's not doing the job that it was supposed to do. The second possibility is, is that it's incorrect because it didn't follow the guidelines. Okay, So you'll have to look at it carefully and then see whether it's incorrect for which reason that's all okay uh, and again another guideline is it says in joins always use table aliases okay now of course the uh, since this is just the end of the first week and when you're seeing this video you may not understand what is an alias etc uh, just go through this presentation uh, later on again you may go through it once again later and you'll understand that okay so here I'll just go over what is in the presentation and then you may, you may look at it. Uh, at the end of second week, it will start making sense to you. Okay. Uh, so for example, uh, and then it says uh, uh, in joins, mention the table names in the same order as explicitly required in the question. Okay. So now in most assignments, I will have the instructions and the instructions will tell you what alias to use for which table. Okay, so for example, in one of the assignments, it may say for the suppliers table, use the alias S, for the parts table, use the alias P, etc., etc. Okay, so those are what you should use in your SQL answers. Of course, technically speaking, you can use any alias you like. You know, you could say suppliers and then you could say X. Nobody prevents you from doing that, but then for automated grading, I want, to, I want you to use these particular aliases. Okay, and again, uh, the word alias may not make much sense to you right now uh, because we, you may not have yet reached that part uh, in the course. Okay, uh, now you can look at this again a couple of times more. Uh, that is at the beginning of the second week, beginning of the third week, etc., etc., 
um, then you will see what is, uh, you know, the meaning of what is being said here. Okay. So the question here says, list the project name, part number, and shipment quantity for each shipment. Mention the shipments table last. Okay. So here clearly, uh, it is telling you that you have the option of mentioning the shipments table either first or second. But I'm telling you, put it last. I mean, your, your answer would still be correct, whether you put it first or second. But I'm saying, give me the solution with the shipments table coming second. Okay, that's what I mean by that particular order. So the answer, you would then write it as select uh, J name, part number, quantity. Again, same order, right? It says uh, uh, project name, part number, shipment quantity. So same order, okay? And I'm mentioning from projects join shipments, okay? That is because I have clearly said mention the shipments table last. So it's mentioning the shipments table last, okay? And then again, it says use aliases. So I'm saying projects J, shipments SP, now, why did I say J for projects? Because that's what the instruction said. For projects, use J, so use J. For shipments, use SP, use SP. Okay? So that's what I mean by use aliases and use the aliases as indicated in the assignment. Okay? So this is following both of those guidelines, so it would be marked as correct. Okay? Uh, so here, uh, I've changed the order, okay? I'm saying uh, uh, mention the shipments table last, okay? So that is correct, okay? Whereas, if you wrote it like this, uh, but in the where condition, notice that I have said j dot j number equals sp dot j number, right? So that is in the same order as the table uh, tables are mentioned. First is the project table, second is the shipments table. So in my join condition also, I put the project table first and the shipments table second. Okay? So the join condition is following this uh, guideline. Whereas here, the join condition is not following the guideline, although it's technically correct. Okay? I've said put the shipments table first, project table second, whereas the shipments table is second here, project table is first. So this would be marked as incorrect. Okay. Again, technically it is correct, but it will be marked as incorrect because it didn't follow the guidelines. That's all. Okay. So again, this is, I'm just repeating this. In the join conditions, mention the column names in the same order as the tables mentioned. Okay. So here it's not following the same order because your project is mentioned first, shipment is mentioned second, whereas here uh, project is, uh, shipment is mentioned first, project is mentioned second. Okay, so this would be marked as wrong, this would be marked as correct. Okay, uh, this guideline says in the select clause, prefix the column names with the table aliases only when strictly needed. Okay, so sometimes in the select clause, you have to prefix a column name with a table name, otherwise there will be a problem and I'm explaining that. Okay, so here we say, list the project name, part number and shipment quantity for each shipment. Okay, so project name has to come from the project table and the rest of the stuff comes from the shipment table. Okay, so I can say select J name PNO quantity from project join shipments. Of course, this would also say mention the shipments table last, so mention it last. Uh, and the join condition is mentioning in the same order project shipments uh, JSP. So that's all good. Uh, so this is correct. Okay. Uh, now notice that we did not use any, uh, we did not prefix the table alias with any of the column names here, okay? However, you could also write it like this. This would also be correct, right? I could say J dot J name. I could say SP dot P number, SP dot quantity. Those are all correct, right? But the point is, there is no need to say J dot J name because J name alone suffices here. You know, there is no ambiguity in J name. When you say J name, you know exactly which column you're talking about. You're talking about the J name column from the project table. So there's no ambiguity. So even though this is correct, I'm saying prefix the column name with a table name, uh, with a table alias, only when it is strictly required. In this case, it's not strictly required, so don't do this. Okay? So once again, this is something that would be correct, but would be marked as incorrect. Okay, here is an example where it is strictly needed. 
Okay, so here I am saying list the project number, project name, part number, and shipment quantity. Okay, so if we may say select J number, J name, P number, quantity, etc. Okay, uh, but this is not correct because you are joining the two tables projects and shipments. Now each of those tables has a column called JNO. Okay, so in your select clause, if you just say JNO, the system says, well, I don't know which JNO you are talking about. Are you talking about the JNO from the project table or are you talking about the JNO from the shipments table? Okay, so when this happens, this is said to be ambiguous. Okay, so if you just say JNO, that's not correct. So in this case, you have to prefix it. Okay, you have to say J.JNO or uh, you know SP.JNO. Okay, so that's what I mean in this guideline. Prefix column names with table aliases only when it is strictly required. Otherwise, don't do it. Okay, so you could say J.JNO or SP.JNO because both are same because you are joining it on the same value. So they will both have the same value. Okay. So that's what this particular guideline is. The next guideline says, unless the question requirement specifically requires a left or a right join, simply use the join. Okay, so here I'm saying list the project name, part number, shipment quantity for each shipment, mention the shipments table last, okay. So here we would just write it uh, normally, right? Now there's nothing in this question that spoke about a requirement for a left join. It never said give priority to the project table or give priority. It never said anything about that. Okay. So when nothing explicit is said, just use a regular join. So in this particular case, this would be marked as wrong when you said left join because left join is not needed. It doesn't, it doesn't say you need a left join. Although the answer would be exactly the same. Okay. Uh, but still, <coughs> uh, we don't want that, okay? So that's the point. Okay, the answer actually wouldn't be exactly the same. You would get a different answer. Uh, but this is saying, this is not saying anything explicit, so leave it alone. Just use a regular join, okay? So we just, the left join is what caused a problem. Uh-oh. Uh, this question is different, okay? In the previous question, one second, let me just go back there. Okay, I can't go back to that question. So in the previous question, it said nothing specific. So uh, writing the answer with left join is incorrect. In this question though, it is explicit. It says for projects with no shipments, just list the project name and leave the other columns, you know, they will become null. Okay, so this is explicitly telling you to do something when there is no match. Okay, in those cases, you would use either a left join or a right join. Okay, in this case, you're using a left join because the shipments table has been mentioned last as the question wanted. So you have to do a left join. Okay, so that's what we mean. Don't use anything other than a just a regular join unless explicitly required by the question. Okay, um, and the final slide says when testing for null, again, this stuff you will learn only after you do the second uh, week of SQL. Okay, so you may rewatch this uh, later. So when testing for null, after making a left or a right join to figure out matching or non-matching rows, always use the column that was involved in the join. Okay, again, at this point it may not make any sense, but come back to this later. So the question says, list the project names for projects that had no shipment. Okay, mention the project table last. Okay, so the approach we follow for this, if you you know, later watch the slides, you'll see the approach is that we will perform a left join. In this case, project is mentioned first, so we'll perform a left join and then explicitly pick out those rows for which there was no match in the shipment table, right? Which means those particular projects didn't have a shipment, okay? So that's what is going on here. So it would be like this. It says, uh, select J name from shipments, right join projects, etc where sp.j number is null, okay? That means we are saying I do a join of both of these, shipments table and the, pro, I mean the project, uh, shipments right join projects, we are giving priority to, uh, to projects, okay? But 
for projects for which there is no match in the shipments table, in other words, shipments S speed or J number is null, those are the ones, uh, projects for which there was no shipment. Okay? So when we are testing it, we are testing on S speed or J number. Now we could very well have said S speed or P number, S speed or S number is null. We could have said any of those things because what we are saying is there is no corresponding row in the shipment table. Okay? But canonically, it is most convenient to check for uh, the column on which you actually performed the join. Okay? Now, if you put any other column, uh, technically, uh, it could still be correct. Sometimes it will be, still be wrong. But this is guaranteed to be correct always. If you use the actual column on which you perform the join, it's guaranteed to be correct. Okay? So that's what uh, I'm saying. So use that column when you're testing for it. Okay? So those are the guidelines. I will post this, uh, uh, this video, make it available. Uh, so I would say uh, watch it, you know, uh, w probably once every week to make sure that you're picking up the corresponding guidelines for the topics covered during that particular week. Okay? Or if you just, you know, follow uh, the way in which I write the answers in the videos, that will pretty much follow all of these guidelines. Okay? Th that's about it. Thank you.